boxes. But anyway, so the next we come to the frame structure. So how are the bits sent on the on the air? So just like we saw in GSN, there was a super frame that consisted of frame and so on and so forth, right? The same thing is done here. There is a super frame which is 10 millisecond long. So this is super frame 0, super frame 1, super frame 2. So each of these is 10 millisecond. For some reason, they don't call it frame. Each super frame consists of sub frames which are 1 millisecond long. So now this super frame consists of SF0, SF1 to all the bit SF9, 1 millisecond long. Each subframe consists of two slots, which is half millisecond long. During this slot, you can do the downlink. During this slot, you can do the uplink. During these, you can send symbols like this. You have a symbol and you have a prefix, right? Cyclic prefix. So this is a symbol 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 symbols. And then there is a gap between these six symbols, which is called the prefix. So in this case, if you have 5.2 microsecond gap here and 4.7 here, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times 4.7 is like 30, somewhere 30 microsecond plus 5, 35 microsecond. You subtract that from this and you get the symbol size, you get these sizes. Then there is one thing called extended cyclic prefix where there is more gap, in which case only five symbols will be sent and, and the gap and the, and the gap is 16 microsecond. Why 16 microsecond? Because if you are going long distance, you need longer gap. If you are going short distance, you need shorter gap because what the gap does is it allows you to do multi-path. You know, if, if something went straight and something went like this, they will still not kill each other, you know. So this is how much path difference can be, 15 microsecond or 4 microsecond. Now the difference between the first and the second 5.2 and 4.7 is because if you do 4.7 for all of them, you're still left with something in the beginning and we said, okay, so that is, yeah, I mean, obviously, right? So anyway, so, so the important thing to notice is that that the downlink is 0.5 millisecond and the uplink is 0.5 milliseconds. If I want to talk, I mean, or let's say you want to talk and I'm the base station, you will say, look, I want to talk. So you will say that in the uplink, right? And within half a mile millisecond, I can turn around and say, okay, all right, your turn to talk. So this is advantage of having a very short, what we said, frame. Remember we said, Vimax had a bigger frame. Vimax had a bigger frame and then the phone companies complained that no, 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 this is not good for us. We really need real time and, you know, this one is scheduling. So you want to turn around very fast. So they selected a very short frame. Again, there is an advantage of very short frame and there is a disadvantage of very short frame. Advantage is you can turn around very fast. Disadvantage is that you turn around very fast. I mean, you just have to keep turning around. <laughs> you know, so, so that's the thing is you're dancing, you know, like this. So, so that's the, each side can have the win, but this side won, LTE won, all right? Now, what happens in that half millisecond? Half millisecond is this slot, right? There are 1,000 carriers or some number of carriers. Each user is given some number of carriers over certain number of slots, okay, certain number of time, right? So, minimum you can get is, minimum you can get is 12 carriers over one time slot. 12 vertical, 7 horizontal, 7 symbols horizontal. Actually, we saw only five symbols, so I don't know. Yeah, these are seven symbols. Okay, there are seven symbols right there. Right? So, minimum I can give you, or minimum the base can give anybody is 12 by 7. 
And we will, if you need more, then we give you 24. If you need more, we give you 36 carriers and so on and so forth. So we, we don't go to 1024 in a one by one carrier. You know, we just go into units of 12. Makes accounting easier rather than you know, doing complicated stuff. All right, so 12 by 7. The, it's called resource block. So when, when the time starts, then right in the beginning, there is a map. There is a map which says that, okay, this resource block belongs to that user. You have the resource block 5 through 27, so you will get this whole area. And then the user 2 has this area and so on and so forth. And if your name is not there, then you don't have anything in that. Thing. This is both for downlink and uplink. There's a downlink map, there's an uplink map. All right, the map actually only comes in the downlink direction. What happens is, in the downlink frame, there is a downlink map that says that if you get this whole frame, this is your bit, this is your bit, this is your bit, this is your bit, right? But also says that in the next uplink, here is the map. So the uplink map is in the downlink, right? And it says that, okay, when the next frame comes in, you can transmit at this frequency at this time, you can transmit on this frequency at this time, you can transmit this frequency at this time, and this changes every frame. Okay, unless you are doing persistent scheduling, right? For some users, they will get persistent scheduling, right? So for them, every fourth frame, you get the, this particular thing and then you got that until, you know, I mean, for how many frames you have given you. So this is how the resource allocation is, 12 minimum. I mean, you can get 12 times 10, 120, and you can get 12 times, you know, whatever, I mean, you know. Oh, yeah, see, thing is, this is the minimum. Resource block is 12 subcarriers over one time slot. So, basically, seven, these are all symbols. So, seven symbols, 12 carriers, right? This is the, this is the unit of allocation. I mean, so, when you are making a map, you know exactly where the, I mean, how many blocks are there because there will be otherwise such too many blocks and too many points. You know what, this is another whole thing. If you go back to our paper list and you will see our paper list somewhere on our website, to give the allocation optimally, you have to fill in with a square, with rectangles. You have this whole rectangle to fill in and every user has a different requirement. So this bin filling problem is a very interesting scheduling problem. Because you get a rectangle, you get a rectangle, you get a rectangle, and how do you fill in so that everything is used, right? Now, if the rectangles had one very, very tiny, tiny, there will be a lot of possibilities, right? So we said, okay, this is 12 by 7 is the minimum. Okay, so the question is whether it is better to go in time or better to go higher. If I need more, better to go higher in time or better to go higher in frequency? This is a very interesting question. On the downlink, on the downlink, it doesn't cost anything extra for the receiver to receive 1024 carriers. It is already receiving all carriers, right? So in the downlink, it will save the battery if the time is less, carrier is more. Right? Uplink is just the opposite. Okay? In the uplink, if it was using more carriers, it will probably need more batteries. I mean, I, I don't know how this all works, but basically, so the uplink, you really want to minimize the, put all the power on few carriers. Okay? And save the battery. So, yeah, so it is done horizontally in the uplink, vertically in the downlink. And this is a very complex problem, and we, we can write papers and papers, and we, I have a paper in IEEE transactions and especially, so this is really high quality transaction, right? So a lot of work there. How to schedule these squares inside a square. I mean, these are not squares actually, rectangles inside a rectangle. All right, that brings us to the end. And with this thing about WiMAX versus LTE, if you go back five, six years ago, when I taught this course, there was no LTE, everything was BiMAX. We taught BiMAX. 
then in 2009 YMF went away so I think 2010 we had half and half now we don't talk about YMF anymore so what is the difference they are very similar with minor difference and the difference is net head versus bell head this is very interesting there are two kinds of networking guys one which are net head and one which are bell heads okay bell heads work for the phone company the net heads work for the IT companies like Cisco and um, you know Facebook and things like that they think, think very differently and actually most of us actually came as a net head enterprise networking versus carrier networking academic versus telecom most of the academics are in this IT business okay Intel and Google versus Ericsson and Qualcomm so these guys are pushing WiMAX and these guys are pushing LTE both use OFDMA both are incompatible with 2G and 3G so one of the things that LTE guys said no 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 WiMAX is not compatible with 2G and 3G but so is LTE come on right and both are basically now they have gone from quad band to penta band and so, so anyway, so there is very little difference, but done is done. Vimax is gone, LT is here. That's the summary. Five key points. 4G IMT advanced requires, well, I didn't talk about 4G, so I'm not going to, I think the first point probably will be good for the next lecture. We will talk about 4G. That requires um, one gigabit per second which LTE cannot deliver. So, WiMAX and LTE are 3.9. And they have common, numerous common features, many bands, flexible bandwidth, FDD, TDD, MIMO, beam farming, HARQ, IP based, OFDMA, these are all same. The key differentiator is SCFDMA, which is pre-coded OFDMA. STBC, Requires transmitting. So now we know the difference between STBC and SFBC. STBC is space time block code. Now we have a space frequency block code where the blocks go on different frequencies. We know puncturing. Puncturing means you just don't send some bits. All right. And save the bandwidth. And then you send it if, the tr if, if, if you get into trouble. That is called HARQ, hybrid ARQ. And then we saw the super frames and the frames and so on and so forth is that every half a millisecond the things changes okay now if you go back to WiMAX the numbers are much larger I mean half a millisecond would be considered too small in the WiMAX world so the honor this ghost book is very highly recommended um, then these are all the uh, these last of three things are not books anyway and then if you want to read more there's lots of books on LTE that's